Good day, ladies and gentlemen! This is your daily reminder that you are breathing manually. Otherwise known as a Warframe guide. Remember when you first started Warframe? Remember how bright and starry-eyed you were when discovering just how broad scoped the game was and realizing, damn, I might be in over my head here. I mean, I'm going to assume I was like that too. I, I mean, I can't remember what happened six minutes ago, let alone six years ago. When we look back at how much we've progressed in Warframe, I bet we wish there was a way we could go back in time and grab ourselves, our past selves, by the shoulders and go, No! What are you doing? And inform them of the things that they're about to do that will adversely affect their enjoyment of the game and hopefully inform them of things that they could do better to have a better time in the game and not make stupid mistakes like I did, like spending your starter platinum on a friggin' Sindana. <laughs> yes. So, my fellow dudes and dudettes, we're going to make this video of things I wish I knew when starting Warframe. Or something. Um, <laughs> either way, I'd like to know in the comments down below how many of you, how many of these things you agree with? Whether there's things you wish you knew that you know now, and other issues that you had when you first picked up the game that you wish would have been a bit more transparent. So, make sure to use the comments down below and, uh,. And before we go any further, I would like to just quickly mention, if you want to join us in these videos, if you want an awesome community to be part of, do make sure you drop by our Twitch channel, which there will be a link for down in the description below. If you want to get an awesome free glyph, you can use the code Morph, and you'll have our wondrous glyph, which will be changing soon, mind you. And you can also go and follow my Twitter, where I give daily updates to when we're streaming, when we're making content, and all that kind of good stuff, as well as posting dank pictures of art that I draw. So if you want to be part of the community, drop on by, come say hi, we'll gladly get you guys involved. Uh, we stream every day to promote positivity and goodwill and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, drop on by and you'll be able to join these ever-increasing amount of people joining me in the Clan Dojo. These facts we're going to mention are in no particular order and they're just going to come off my head at the first thing I can think of, starting with the fact that frames don't equate to power. Let's face it, at some point or another, most of us has asked that age-old question, what is the best frame? And realizing early on that the frames and weapons are merely the playstyle and really the power they hold relies on the modding, it's something that we often don't understand in the early stage, and that all that frames entail is the method and utility they bring to a match. At the beginning of our time in Warframe, we will likely have some predisposition of how video games work, so we naturally base our opinions of what we experience in Warframe off of what we already know. And with most of us, we all likely have played a game like WoW or Guild Wars or whatever else, and likely, and like where there is, in those games there is a meta, if you will, that leads us to always wonder what is the best for that game, Warframe does it differently. In Warframe, there is no quote-unquote best. There is no meta. There is simply what meets the need and what you want enjoy playing. I wish when I first picked up the game, I learnt this sooner, because I really found myself basing my entire playstyle and early game experiencing on wanting to use what other people's opinions were suggesting for. Realistically, Warframe is entirely based around the idea of having fun in your own manner, and there is nothing in this game that any frame can't achieve with just some decent modding and some understanding or some good old teamwork. Something that often goes unknown by most people within their first few weeks of playing this game is the use of the dev streams. Woo, spooky. When we first jump into Warframe, we don't really have much interface with any outside resources, so we often just project ourselves through the game without really having much of a connection with anything going on outside of our own little bubble. When I discovered the partner program and thusly the dev streams, I realized just how tight-knit this community truly was and how much more there was beyond just my initial bubble. The dev streams, hosted once every second Friday, mostly, unless they're cancelled, offer a gleaming insight into the world of Warframe and a look into upcoming patches and also sneak peeks at future content, as well as a behind the scenes of things being worked on at DE's end, as well as also then insights into why DE Scott is always drunk whilst they record them. I wish I'd, I really wish I'd known of these sooner because the second I found the dev streams, not only did I meet a bunch of new people that were absolutely amazing, I felt like I had a more I had more to relate to on the game. I felt like I'd found a community that helped encourage me to produce my content and thusly enjoy the game further. Moving on, so... You know when you first get into the game and you, you're just getting on with your thing, going from goal to goal and not really paying any heed to how much you're actually completing in the process? Well, 
a lot of us in the early stages, at least from my perspective of playing the game, don't quite realize that completing every node on a planet unlocks a mission type known as the Nightmare Missions. These missions appear on an existing node and come with an additional condition to them to make them harder, and as a reward, give you access to a range of different mods that can be perfect to complete certain builds with. On top of that, it then leads you to, into another factor where completing all the nodes in a star chart benefit your mastery completion. And once all the star chart has been unlocked, you get access to the Arbitrations, a mission type which makes you want to rage your tits off because when you die, you die for good, but has an unbelievable rotation of rewards and endo grind potential. So I guess really what I'm saying is, I really wish I'd have known to be a bit more of a completionist in the early stage, rather than doing half-baked objectives, because it took me years to figure out why I was missing all this fantastic content. Another really big element that I didn't even know existed until somebody pointed it out were the syndicates. After I'd been playing the game for almost a year, someone said, Hey, Makari! And I replied with, Yes, random viewer that I can't remember the name of. And he said, What syndicate are you with? And I just sat there for a few moments, perplexed as to what this weird thing he just talked to me about was. Long story short, I then got introduced to those lovely faction grinds and just how many art guns and cosmetics I'd been missing out on. So really, not only did I find that there was this whole world of extra content out there, but finding also that there were capturers and new things to sell for platinum, and one thing that I feel goes really underappreciated in this manner, is you can literally farm relics with these uh, syndicates with their reputation. These relic packs you can buy for... 20k rep a piece and they will give you three random relics of the existing relic pool and for somebody who is as lazy as me who can't be bothered to farm them in the first place it gives you the option of vicariously farming relics whilst doing your regular content so long as you slap one of your regalia for that syndicate on your body short long story short i really wish i'd learned to figure out that there was a uh, rep grind in this game one thing I also wish I knew when I picked up this game was that by using the code MakariMorph, you can get a completely free and awesome glyph to spread the word of the Top Hatters. Yes, that's something I wish I knew when I picked up the game before I was even a Warframe partner and had a glyph. Ha ha ha! Use code MakariMorph to get a free glyph today. Other things I really wish I knew were the fact you can't trade crafted prime parts in Warframe, and just general trading etiquette as a whole. Like the fact that you can... Like things you can or can't trade as a whole. Or the fact you can you can trade prime mods, but they cost a million credits per time. That's a lot of money that I could have been spending on leveling my other mods. Also, the fact that you have Maru's Bazaar that opens up a more one-to-one -one avenue for selling your delightful wares. Like, who would have thought you could go to a relay, lift that left-ass slapper of yours into the air, and share to everyone around you that you're selling a... Stub, stug Riven with 150% recoil on it for 500 platinum. I have seen this happen. Don't judge me. Point being is, it's fun to be able to not need the in-game marketplace chat system to sell your stuff, and to also have that more social experience while selling your gear, whilst you watch some dude trying to sell a Mesa Prime for 259 platinum, and then wonder why nobody's talking to them. Also to find avenues where people are selling other delightful antiquities that you've been after for all that time. Okay. Guys, there's really a lot of things that I wish I knew when I picked up Warframe. I'm not the smartest kettle on the block, and I could go through each and every one of them in a defined manner. But this video needs to be about 15 minutes long, so I can, I can get those premium, premium YouTube ads while not boring your tits off. And if I do try and go for all in this video, it will likely be longer than 20 minutes. So let's quick fire things from now on and, and with the things that I would have loved to have known when I started playing Warframe. Patience is key. Things take time. Time is spent every day just by existing. Don't rush things that can just take time, because time will just pass as you go. Spending platinum on things that take time is silly, but is down to personal preference. If you really want to do it, by all means, go ahead and do so. But please consider the fact that platinum could be spent on something far more beneficial. Speaking of platinum, platinum is not pay to win. You can farm platinum just by playing the game and earning items you sell in the marketplace. Great thing DE made this game for all people to enjoy just by having a currency that's easily to, able to be obtained rather than just paying 
paying you real life money for it. There are many different variants of weapons to offer different playstyles, like the Gorgon versus the Gorgon Wraith and the Prisma Gorgon that are obtained from different events, scenarios, and different other antiquities within the game itself. The Codex. This wonderful device in your lander is infinitely useful for keeping track of your quests, the location of mods, finding certain items, and also knowing the lore bombs that exist within the game, as well as also finding the phone number of Space Mom. You can sell stuff from your inventory, meaning all those Oberon and Harrow parts you keep finding probably means you have about a million credits worth of shit lying in your inventory. Did I swear there? Oh, damn. Now we're not going to get that sweet ad revenue. Using revives takes affinity to do so and thus reduces your XP gain in a mission. And then if you pay attention to it, you'll notice that your leveling progress you've made so far will have been reduced as well. Mastery has limitations, and these limitations apply to things like your daily rep earning that you get on a day-by-day -day basis, amount of trades you get in a day, and also locks you out of certain weapons, ribbons, and frames. So doing your research ahead of time will definitely pay dividends in this manner. You can use the modding station to dissolve duplicate mods for lots of endo, or transfuse them and sell them for extra cash, or you can combine them all together and get a new random mod by merging four mods together and hopefully getting something better than what you put in. In the early stage, this is supremely helpful in and helps make ends meet when you're running low on endo or credits. And finally, although there are more that I could mention, the Clem and Maru's Bazaar weekly quest. You may not notice these. These are in the little triangle icon on your overlay. You press that and you get a weekly quest for Maru and Clem. Doing the Maru's Bazaar quest will get you a guaranteed sculpture for some endo and a bunch of other endo related items as well. The Clem quest will then give you the ability of helping Clem on a mission and helping Darvo. And in the process, you will get some Clem clones that will fight beside you and look all adorable and stuff and are also ridiculous ridiculously powerful. There are far, far more things that I wish I knew when I first started playing Warframe. But like a really lazy content creator, I'm going to let you fill in the blanks. So if you have anything that you wish you knew when you started playing Warframe, leave it in the comments down below and maybe you can help inform those who are just getting into the game themselves. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Do you think that my way of making videos is completely repugnant? If you do, like that's just your opinion, man. If you feel like joining these many maces that are with me right now, again, come and join us on Twitch, go follow my Twitter, and I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. And I will hope to see all of you amazing top hatters in the next video where I definitely won't have an existential crisis about there being a hole in my wall at the moment, or kettles with phallic-shaped objects in them. So thank you for watching, and I'll see all you top hatters in the next video. Microphone? Ta-ra!